on your technique, the big plays will come. Thanks, Don. We'll keep an eye on that defense that has been so banged up through the first month of this season. Hopefully get some guys back for the Tigers next week as the SEC slate kicks into high gear. Utah State wins the toss. They defer, so LSU will get the football first. I mean, pick your poison here. Both these teams get up and down the field. As Coach Ogeron said this week, it is warp speed today in Tiger Stadium. And it'll be a touchback. And LSU will have it out at the 25-yard line. Joe Burrow, who grew up a huge Nebraska fan. His dad, brothers played there. I can't tell if when he was in high school, the 2014 Mr. Football in the state, if he was a Bieber fan or not. I can't tell. Anyway, his dad, Jim, is in attendance today. He's a former defensive coordinator who has retired. said he's going to watch his son play every single week. And he has uh, kept true to form. And Joe said it's great to have him around. And the Athens, Ohio native will line up in this high-powered offense. First play is a handoff. Clyde edwards Hilaire will get it out to the 30-yard line, a gain of five. And that's something they're going to try to do today, and that is incorporate more of the run game. Yeah, that was the emphasis for him is being able to run the football. They haven't ran the ball particularly well, so this is a ball game. They want to just try to get this run game established. edwards Hilaire will slide out to the far hash mark outside the far hash mark on the numbers now empty set for the Tigers that one is right through the hands of Jamar Chase don't see that very often with this group of receivers yeah this is a very very dynamic group of receivers that when the ball's in their hands they can make a lot of people miss he had exactly what he wanted one on one on the backside with a backside slam would have been a first down Jamar Chase has to make that catch first third down coming up uh, third down and five. Kind of a revamped offensive line as well for LSU as Ed Ingram is back on the field. That left guard, Adrian McGee goes to left tackle over the middle. Pass is caught. That'll move the chains. That old line will hustle up to the line of scrimmage after a 16-yard pickup. And there's what you like. Just confident poise inside the pocket, knowing Utah State was in a zone coverage. Found the open receiver and delivered a accurate throw for a first down Edwards Hilaire bounces off some trouble and inside the 45 down to the 43 yard line that runs indicative of the kind of year that Clyde Edwards Hilaire has had he has been hit quicker than any other running back when he touches the football yeah you look at him 58209 but Coach O loves the strength he has below that keeps those runs going. Edwards Hilaire again with the carry inside the 35. And to follow up that status, he's been, as we talked about, hit earlier than any other running back in the conference, but he's third in yards after that contact. And you can see it. He, the first guy usually does not take him down. He runs hard, runs downhill, and always falls forward. Loose football on the turf, scooped up there by Adrian McGee. And he'll fall on it around the 33. Something uncharacteristic here at Joe Burrow inside the pocket. Loses the football. Actually, he doesn't even get it knocked out. He loses it as he's trying to get away from the defensive lineman. Lucky enough for them, McGee picks up the fumble. Second down and nine. Ball sits at the 32. Quick throw comes near side. John Emery, the true freshman out of the backfield. He'll have the first down right around the 20-yard line. Give him a 14-yard pickup. Evan Metzenheimer with the stop for Utah State. Aggies defensively giving up just 21 points a game. Boy, nice little kick to the outside for Emery, and he'll fall forward to about the 13-yard line. Tripped up by Shaq Bond. John Henry, very good in space. One thing offensive coordinator Steve Eisenberger said is, we get him in space, we got a good play there. Here goes Henry again. Coming near side, dies for the goal line. Touchdown, LSU. There is a flag in the backfield, and that may be coming back on a hold. Replay, second down. So 
Well, you can take the six off the board and back up LSU 10 yards. I'll move it all the way out to the 23-yard line. Usually when you get a play like that, sometimes somebody loses leverage or there's a hole on the edge, and that's exactly what happened, not allowing that left leverage defender to get outside. So now LSU back outside that red zone area where they have been perfect this year, 27 out of 27. Underneath pass. That one is caught by Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and he'll get it down to the 10-yard line. He'll pick up 13, and looks like he'll be just shy of the line to gain by a few inches. And they'll have the first down as Joe Burrow follows right behind number 22. It'll be first and goal now. You see how successful LSU has been in the red zone this season. And it's because of the guy number nine right there, Joe Burrow, making great decisions while down there and not forcing the football, but allowing his receivers to make plays when they get inside this 20-yard line. 11th play of the drive coming up. Edwards Hilaire. Pick up a couple of yards, get it close to the seven. Nice job on the outside, number 42. Nick Henninger does a great job of getting that leverage and keeping his leverage on the outside, forcing that football back inside and allowing his guys to rally to the football. This is a four-minute drive. This is an eternity for LSU. <laughs> LSU loves these bunch routes down here near the red zone. Burrow over the middle. Pass is caught. Touchdown. Derek Dillon with the reception from seven yards out. That didn't take long for Joe Burrow to pick up his 18th touchdown pass of the season. Boy, York's point after will sneak through after it was deflected at the line of scrimmage. So a 7 nothing start, Joe Burrow and company doing what they do, and that is scoring points. Uh, do I wish it was at night at Tiger Stadium? Yes, I do. Start at 11 a.m. We've been su very successful in those 11 a.m. games, so we're going to continue with our game plan. Scheduling is out of our control. Well, it is the 31st morning start since 1977. For LSU, they're 19 and 11 in those games, which include four bowl games. The Tigers have won the past 11 morning kickoffs, including the past five here at home. The guy trying to break that streak, Jordan Love. Jordan Love was a guy that took a while for him to grow into his frame and become a quarterback. Started as a wide receiver his freshman year in high school, which is 145 pounds. But of course, then things started to kick into gear. Only D1 major college scholarship offer was Utah State. He took it and has thrived. Last year, 32 touchdowns, six interceptions, led this team to an 11-2 and two record. First pass of the game goes up top, far side, incomplete, looking for Jordan Nathan. But we talked a little bit about Jordan Love and what he brings to the table, but he's a guy that's just kind of a modest competitor. Doesn't get real hyped up, just gets his job done. Nice, cool, calm, collected, inside the pocket. Can make every throw. That one is caught by Nathan. He'll turn the corner, have the first down. Of course, a coaching change a year ago for Utah State. Gary Anderson comes back to take over the reins. He was there for four years in Wisconsin, Oregon State. Jobs opened up. But back this year, didn't want to change anything offensively. Quick hitter to Isaac Mariner, and that one is a pickup that'll take it to the 47, but an injured Tiger. 
That is Grant Delpit, who was down, slow to get up. Boy, they just can't afford any more of these injuries defensively, and also an offensive lineman down as well for Utah State. As Kyler Hack, the right tackle, getting worked on. But you love the throw here. Watch the throw coming here. You see Grant coming there, takes a lot of the a brunt of that hit. Not sure what he hurt there. But we'll see. Two players being attended to will give us an opportunity to step aside, update everything when we come back to Baton Rouge after this short timeout. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Good look at nine-year-old Colton Moore, who is an unlikely LSU fan from Odenville, Alabama. He is family diehard Auburn fans. He's been battling through spina bifida and just loves Coach O. Got to town, had a chance to tour the facilities yesterday. Coach O brought him out before the game today out to midfield. Had a chance to see him yesterday. The smile on his face was incredible. <laughs> he was just enjoying every moment of it. But when he headed to the uh, buffet line. It's all about the ice cream. Yeah, he didn't have time for us at that point. <laughs> on a first down, Scarver makes the catch, a pickup of eight. And Dave, you can see the tempo in which Utah State plays when ball comes out of the hands quickly of Jordan Love. And you see LSU has to get lined up quickly. It's the biggest thing. They have to worry about this ball game so far. Off the left side, couple of missed tackles. Gerald Bright, who had 36 carries last week against Colorado State, breaks a tackle and picks up the first down. By the way, an update for you that Grant Delpit, who left the field under his own power, being uh, treated for a possible concussion. He's in the pro protocol stages right now, being attended to by that training staff. We'll try to get an update. Just a big collision for him. Also, Right tackle Kyler Hack of Utah State was helped off the field. And there goes Delpit into that LSU locker room. They'll swing it near side. They'll find Gerald Bright. But Gerald hit immediately by Patrick Queen, a loss of five. And one thing you see on this LSU defense is speed, speed all over the board. Linebacker Patrick McQueen shot out of cannon and saw that screen early. Third down and 15. There's Caleb on chasing up here at the top of the screen. LSU's looking for some pass rush. He's the guy that can bring it. So LSU will take that timeout. This Utah State team. 50% on third downs this year. That is 17th in the country. Gary Anderson, as we talked about, coming back home. And this offense was so electric a year ago. They led the nation in scoring drives under one minute last year. They had 29 of those. They averaged a minute 51 per drive this year. Uh, he didn't want to change up the offensive philosophy, even though he brought in a brand new staff. Yeah, and when you have a quarterback like Jordan Love, he's used to this system, has played well in this system. As a coaching staff, you must adapt to it and not try to change the entire system just because you're a new staff. Mike Sanford, Jr., the offensive coordinator. These were the situations he said they have to stay out of, and they're facing a third and 15. And here's a, a primetime opportunity for LSU to try to get pass rush with just four. Maybe it's two down territory, get half of it here. Oh, loose football, Love falls on it. Now you're in a definite punting situation. That'll be a loss of nine. Yeah, those are the unforced errors right there you talk about, Dave. In a ball game like this, you can't have these type of situations. You see, he wasn't even ready for the football yet. He was still surveying the field. He gave the signal, but he's still surveying the field, trying to see if he can get a good play call in. Pierce Callister, the true freshman out of Ogden, Utah, averaging 37 yards per punt, delivers this one inside the 20. It's a favorable Aggie bounce. It's going to end up just inside the five-yard line. Fortuitous bounce for the Aggies in a 47-yard punt. 
Don't forget, coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central, week 6 of the college football season rolls on. Troy visiting Columbia, Missouri. Vandy and Ole Miss cap off the day at 7.30 Eastern in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Missouri, they've won five straight at home, dating back to last year's 33-28 win over Vanderbilt. Meanwhile, in Oxford, it's homecoming. First and ten, five yard line. Missouri, a sneaky team out of the East, yeah. playing well since that Wyoming loss. LSU on that last touchdown drive with four minutes and 19 seconds. Averaging just a tick over two minutes per scoring drive this year. Clyde Edwards Hilaire with the three yard pickup. And Dave, early things I've noticed about LSU and this Utah State front, there's not been a lot of movement by this LSU offensive line so far. It's been Clyde Hilaire breaking some tackles in this offensive line. That left side is the real key that they're trying to figure out as this season goes on. That one is overthrown as Justin Jefferson couldn't get up to get that one. Uncharacteristic of Joe Burrow there, just an air mail on the throw there, a simple out route. Saw him throw this 25 times in practice on Thursday, but it brings up a third down here. Utah State can find a way to get off the field or create some pass rush. And it looks like they got a lot going on up front. Another empty set for LSU on a third down and seven. Three-man rush by the Aggies. On the run, pass is intercepted at the 27-yard line. Cameron Haney returns it 19 yards. Right through the hands of Thaddeus Moss. Once again, just uncharacteristic of Joe Burrow throwing his football high. He does a great job of getting outside the pocket here, trying to create something here. And the ball is just a little bit high, but this is a ball that you expect him to catch. A little bit off the hands, but that is Moss has to make this grab. It's a little bit off his hands too, but what a great, great job of Utah State getting the interception there. Well, this LSU defense will be tested here on a first down and goal from Right around the seven yard line. Grant Delpit back on the field for LSU. Left the last possession. Went into the locker room and has returned. Delay handoff goes to Bright. Might have gotten a yard. And that goes back to the team speed defense that LSU plays. We're trying to go east and west. Patrick Queen is not allowed to get east and west here. But one guy that Utah State loves down here is Caleb Rep, number 87. Jordan Love to the back of the end zone. Might have just thrown that one away. Double coverage back there by LSU looking for Scarver, his All-American return man. And now it's third down and goal. Well, Utah State lines up so quickly after an incomplete pass. They'll do a check with me, but how many teams after an incomplete pass get to the line of scrimmage that quickly? Yeah, trying to get LSU to declare the identity. What are they going to do on the backside? Looks like they're playing some type of zone. But once again, here's the guy, Caleb on Chason, who can make a huge impact on this play. LSU brings three. And it's good enough to drop Jordan Love back around the 15-yard line. A loss of six. Neil Farrell, you see it right off your left side. Continues to work, comes all the way around and gets that big paw on Jordan Love. And give this LSU defense a lot of credit for holding this Utah State offense to possibly three points here. 30-yard field goal attempt. Eberly, right foot. It's a line drive right through the upright. So somewhat of a gift for Utah State. They put three on the board. It's a 7-3 ball game here in Baton Rouge. Time to take a look at our mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate. Let's go back to that last LSU interception. Yeah, you talk about getting outside the pocket here. That is Moss works at it. And Paul's it right here. Look at him come back and fight 
back to the quarterback, but Joe Burrow has to do a better job of putting his football on his body. And a tip ball inside the red zone, it's never good. Tips, overthrows, always end up in interceptions, and now it leads to Utah State with three points on the board and a little momentum going into this next drive. Just the third interception of the year for Joe Burrow. And over 130 pass attempts. Utah State will take the three. Clyde Edwards Hilaire on the return. Bounces it near side to the 35 and run out of bounds at the 40 yard line. 37 yard return, uh, return and decent field position coming up for the Tigers offensively. Yeah, Clyde Hilaire has been kind of the, the kickstart for this entire team this first quarter. A lot of positive runs. Got to continue to get the ball in his hands. He's playing really good football to start this ball game. Ty Davis Price in at running back. Coaches said we'd see a lot of these true freshmen today. Davis Price out of Baton Rouge, Southern Lab High School, just around the corner from where we sit. Flag down. Joe Burrow will keep it. Burrow on the keeper. So Burrow, two weeks ago against Vanderbilt, just crazy. 350 yards passing in the first half. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 76 is lined up in the backfield. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Six touchdown passes, no interceptions against the Commodores. And he said, yeah, they should have played better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that just tells you where he is mentally in his offense and expects everything to be perfect. And he knows you can't be perfect, but he expects to be pretty close. Already this year, he's been named three times as the SEC's Offensive Player of the Week. On a first down and 15. A run it on the ground and give it to Ty Davis Price, who's out over the 45-yard line. They call Ty Davis Price their downhill, more physical back. And all three guys do a little bit something different, but they say he's the more physical one of the bunch. 6'1, 226. Good stop there. We'll bring up a third down. So far early in this ballgame, Utah State's done a great job of playing coverage because they're backing off, not allowing LSU to hit the deep throws that they're usually used to. Third and short here, still an opportunity for them to stretch the field and throw it down. Drop it off underneath, pass is caught, Derek Dillon. He'll have the first down at the Aggie 45, a nine yard pickup. This is kind of what we talked about in the open. Full field progressions, going through high to low, coming back down to a shallow cross, converting on the third down. The quick decision making by Joe Burrow has been the key to the success for this offense. Of course, no Terrace Marshall at wide receiver, 20 catches on the year out after having foot surgery. But Coach O said he has made a tremendous comeback and will return quicker than uh, they thought he would. Not so sure he'll make it next week, but you never know. <laughs> Technology these days, you never know. Pressure comes. Burrow can't slip past it, and he is thrown to the ground by David Woodward, the junior linebacker who is a tackle machine. Yeah, David Woodward coming in from that middle linebacker spot. He loops around, and number 68, Damian Lewis just misses him as he comes through on a Linebacker dog blitz. And Joe Burrow has to come out the ball game. His helmet came off. So now we see Miles Brennan. A sophomore who is 16 out of 25 on the year. We'll check in on a second down and 14. Don't let him. Well, they were thinking about letting him throw, but the old quarterback keeper. Little delayed quarterback draw gets him to the 43-yard line. Metzenheimer with that stop. That'll be his fourth tackle of the game for Utah State. And here comes Joe Burrow. 
Nice job there, there. There, Rosenthal getting the block, helping his quarterback pick up positive yards. Now you got a chance here on third down to pick it up. Need to get it to the 34. Burrow, five out of eight, 56 yards. Steps up in the pocket. This one's caught again by Derek Dillon, but he is shy of the line to gain. They're going to be about a yard shy. Shaq Bond comes up to make a nice tackle on Dillon. Yeah, what a great tackle there in open space right there. I thought this ball game would come down to who can tackle in open space. LSU going fast. Burrow keeps it, and he is denied. They don't get to the 35-yard line. Metzenheimer making a play for the Aggies. And LSU will turn it over on downs. Even with the quick pace, the quick tempo. Watch the penetration here by Utah State to get right in the middle. Right up here in the middle, you're going to get the penetration coming right through the middle. And look at this blow it up. Coming off the edge there is Kevin Metzenheimer. Nice job of that defensive front in the middle. Making it tough, forcing him to bounce it outside. LSU was two out of two on fourth down conversions until that attempt. So the Aggies will have it at the 35. Riley Burt in at running back. Love. Trying to buy a little time. Lost it up in the air. Passes. Caught a one-handed grab. Mariner brings it in and a huge gain of 35 yards. But Siosi Mariner is down. The grad transfer from Utah. Making a heck of a catch. I mean, but watch this foot one-handed coming down. And what a catch there by C.O.C. Mariner. Christian Fulton on the coverage. Had pretty good coverage. But the ball was an absolute dime from Jory Love. Put it in the spot only. His receiver could make a catch. We'll step aside. Back to Baton Rouge after this. C.O.C. Mariner walking off to that Aggie bench after making a outstanding grab, picking up 35 yards. Initially, nothing's there. Instead of forcing the football, this turns into scramble drill. And these are things they practice all the time, giving their guys a chance. And watch C.O.C. Mariner go into scramble mode, gives his guy an opportunity, and he makes a play for him. Big time throw and catch for Utah State. That's what Jordan Love brings to the table that the NFL scouts love is mobility and, and, and also his ability to make some throws that you don't necessarily think he can make. Oh, he's made a couple of those already, just off platform, letting it go. Tompkins almost grabbed it, was juggling it, finally bounced off his helmet and out of bounds. It'll be second down and 10. Last year, Jordan Love was a Mountain West Player of the Week five times. Caleb Rep can't hang on to that one. Oh, man, this is touchdown. This is a walk-in. You're hitting him on a seam post right here, or seam high. Delpit oh. overruns it. He catches that football. He walks into the end zone. Perfectly thrown football by Jordan Love. This guy's got to help him. On third down, Love is flush. Throws on the run. And that'll be incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Ball sits at the 30-yard line. So it looks like they're going to attempt what will amount to a 47-yard field goal attempt. Dominic Eberle gets to kick out of that uh, thin air. And Utah, Logan, Utah. Made from 30 already. This will be from 47 near hash mark. Out of the hold of Aaron Dalton. And he will bang that one through the upright. So he has a 48-yarder and now a 47-yarder on the season. 
And it's a one-point game. LSU leading Utah State 7-6 late first quarter. And while we have a break in the action, let's throw it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, have you seen Marty? Great to see Laura. Also, to say congratulations on the birth of her baby girl just a few days ago. Congratulations, Laura. Her and Josh. I know they've been waiting. I don't know if patiently would be the right term for that. But, <laughs> but uh, hopefully she's doing just fine and we'll get back out on the road and see her at some sporting events. I'm sure her and her baby girl are on the couch right now watching a little football. She was checking in with us last week while we were on the air. Maybe she'll... Give us a thumbs up. So LSU leading by one over Utah State. Couple of field goals by the Aggies. It has not been a clean, crisp offensive performance to this point for LSU. Little pooch kick. That will settle down around the 21 yard line. Well, the SEC with five teams that remain unbeaten. And in just a few hours, they'll be down to four. Yeah. As Auburn and Florida get set to go at it. LSU sits there right now. And you see a college football playoff chance to get in for LSU at 26 right now. And obviously, everything's right in front of them. Um, you know, Florida, Auburn, LSU, those teams sitting there on the outside right now. But everybody, everybody has the opportunity to play each other real soon. So the next three or four weeks, a lot of that will shake out and you see where you stand. Justin Jefferson, near side, pushed out of bounds around the 36-yard line. Troy Leffridge pushes him out of bounds, but not before Jefferson picks up 38. First time we've had an opportunity to really call his name. He is Played really good football for him this year. 21 catches, 392 yards on the season. But just find a way to get him the football in space, and you can see what it looks like when he has the ball. Boy, the movement on the left side might have been a little late snap, too, from Lloyd Cushenberry. Ball start on the offense. Number 51 and 73. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. Dare Rosenthal, Adrian McGee managing the left side of that offensive line right now. Matter of fact, we've seen the last couple of drives have featured McGee at left guard, Rosenthal at left tackles. Burrow, good play fake. A lot of time to throw. Nobody open in the back end. He'll just keep it. He'll pick up the first down and then some out to the 20-yard line. 21-yard run. Burrow does a great job of creating something after nothing, and the coverage is pretty good on the backside. I thought he might have had a chance to hit number two, Justin Jefferson, going across the middle. He had a safety in the middle of the field, but that's one he lays out there usually. Edwards Hilaire picks up six. Leffridge making another stop on the back end for Utah State. Nice job there in the run game of number 73, Adrian McGee, getting a nice block, creating a lane. And that's what we talked about coming to this ball game was can that left side have any movement up front and establish the run game as LSU takes it to the second quarter. That will be it for the first 15 minutes. An early morning start, a hot afternoon on the banks of the Mississippi River. LSU up by one. Seven, six, our score. Back in a moment. Edward G. Lair breaks a tackle. Down to the five yard line. It'll be a gain of nine and first and goal for LSU. This is going to be there for LSU throughout this ball game. 
simply because of the soft cover that Utah State is playing right now. They're going to come up and force the issue, but right now running the football is where LSU is. Run it again with Edwards Elaire and loose football. Who's got it? Thaddeus Moss comes up with the football right at the goal line. I thought he might have recovered it inside the end zone. They're going to take another look at this, a closer look. Well, inside zone, right coming through here. You see the ball is definitely out. A nice call. Yeah, he does recover the football right there on the one or half inch line. Good job with Thaddeus Moss being alert, coming up with that football. That could have been a big turn of events for Utah State. Had a chance, had a hand on it, everything, and could not come up with it. Looked like Shaq Barr was the guy who had a finger on it, just could not come up with it. Oh, we saw Joe Burrow fumble earlier. Offensive line fell on that one. This time you're tied in, falls on a loose ball. We've seen an interception already. And lucky to have uh, rules expert Matt Austin back in our studios. Matt, what'd you see on that particular fumble? Yeah, Dave and DJ, it looks like that the, the recovering player did pull the ball into the end zone after he possessed it. So but that's what replay has to decide. When did he get possession of that ball? If it was in the field of play, then he's down. The ball's will be on about the one foot line. If he pu if he pulled it into the end zone, it'll stay there. If he didn't get possession until it was over the goal line, it would be a touchdown. See, man, I think it's one of those where replay is good right there. Because yeah. Thaddeus, he was sneaky now. He's trying to sneak him to get him a, a <laughs> sneaky <laughs> touchdown there. So it will be at the half-yard line. Burrow will try to quarterback sneak it in, and does he get in? No sign just yet. And there it is. Touchdown, LSU. Second rushing touchdown of the year for Joe Burrow. There have been some flashier touchdowns for <laughs> Joe Burrow this year. I'll tell you, man, as a former QB, but if it's 1 or it's 40, we'll take those TDs. <laughs> We'll take him any way we can get him. Got a little help from his tail back there, pushing him into the end zone. But counts the same for LSU. I know they'll take it here, especially after almost losing the fumble there on the goal line. Point after is up and through from Cade York, the true freshman. And it's a 14-6 ball game. Just a few seconds into the second quarter. Of course, some big ball games today. And perhaps the biggest, Florida and Auburn going at it. Ah. That's going to be a fun one. All right, you got Bo Nix, yep. Kyle Trask. Trask hasn't played a whole lot. You got Bo Nix, who certainly hasn't played a lot as a true freshman. Yep. Quarterback advantage where? Man. You know what? I say advantage trash because he's at home yeah but I also like Bo Nix because he's been on the road and he's experienced those environments the swamp is a tough place to play so we'll see which guy can handle that atmosphere but ultimately in this league it comes down to the trenches yeah. Auburn has a really good defensive front Florida has struggled on the offensive line can they protect Cal Trask in that ball game will be key and in that Georgia Tennessee game Tennessee going with a true freshman quarterback today Jared Garantano We'll watch from the sidelines to start that one in Tennessee. It's, boy, it's just been a, it's been kind of a mess. It's been a, it's not even up and down. It's been down in most of this season for Tennessee. And maybe you get up for a rivalry game. Georgia coming to town. Maybe you get up for them. Atkins will kick this one into the end zone. Scarver brought it out from about eight yards deep last week against Colorado State and took it to the end zone. This time he took it to the 20 and got walloped. It's another Saturday in the South. And speaking of Saturdays in the South, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, it's our eight-part documentary that chronicles the history of SEC football. Tuesdays at 9 Eastern, part six takes you into the 90s. With change, the word of the decade, mega TV deals with CBS and ESPN, the first ever conference championship game, Arkansas and South Carolina joined. The fun and gun offense started dominating college football. And the rivalry between the Gators and Peyton Manning's Tennessee Volunteers really took off. Fun and gun. I like those type of offenses. Eric Monroe. 
After that collision, slow to get up. Jack Marucci, long time head athletic trainer, jogging off with him. Eric Marosa, guys, part of that secondary where we talked about it earlier already. This LSU defense is already limited. They can't afford anybody else to go down. Saw Grant Delpit come back in the game, so good for him. First down and 10 Aggies. We're talking to Dave Aranda. Said, basically, our best players got to start making some more plays for us. We'll see if those guys can do it here. And there is a five-yard infraction against LSU. Offside on the defense, number 62, contact on the center. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Bianchi Ica out of Salt Lake City, Utah. You know he was anxious to get going. <laughs> It always baffles me, that guy right there sitting right over the football is the one that usually jumps off sides trying to get a fresh start on those guys. LSU strings it out well. No gain on the play as Bright is slammed to the turf by Clark. And Clark is a guy you'll see at the linebacker position, but you also see him off the edge as well rushing. And another big hit. Nathan will lose three. Vincent, the junior safety, making a play. What's so remarkable about that one is Vincent wasn't even lined up right. He was coming from across the other side of the field to get lined up and runs right into that play. Big third down here. This is what usually Utah State does on third down. They look to the sideline, try to get the best call. Looks like all that extra practice in the off week on tackling for LSU is paying off here, at least in the first half. False start on the offense, number 88, five yard penalty, third down. So now it'll be third down and 13. Four-man rush by LSU. Over the middle, pass is almost picked off. Jacoby Stevens in outstanding coverage. will make it fourth down. And watch at the upper left part of your screen. Here's Vincent. He's going to come all the way across here to make the play. Not even lined up correctly, but comes all the way across and sits out the Swims out the screen and makes the play for a tackle for loss. Talk about team speed on defense, getting where you're supposed to be. You may not start in the right spot, but Vincent ended there. And a flag comes in. LSU went after that. Stingley will let it roll. But they went for the block and did not get it. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense, number 11. 15-yard penalty results in a first down. Eric Monroe a little too anxious. Yeah, we just saw Eric Monroe come off the field. He's coming right off this right edge over here. And you see run right into the kicker. Trying to go get it. You can't get there. You have to find a way to pull up. And running into that leg of the kicker is always going to get you for a big 15-yarder and give Utah State another possession. An extra possession this ball game, and you see Coach Joe, he can't be happy about that. Yeah, it has not been a clean quarter and change so far for LSU. Hand it off to Bright. He'll take it off right guard. He'll pick up two and a half, maybe three. Gerald Bright, 36 carries, 179 yards last week out of Pensacola, Florida. It was just a downpour in their win against Colorado State. Probably affected both teams in the way they wanted to play. In that game, Jordan Love just 17 of 33, 51% completion rate, 204 yards. Quick snap, pressure comes. He lofts it up high in the air. Pass is caught. Jordan Nathan run out of bounds. They'll spot it around the 30-yard line. 
nice pitch and catch. Love to Nathan. We've seen two balls like that today where he has dropped it in the ideal spot for his receivers. Couldn't be put in a better spot. Jordan Love is just as impressive as anybody else in the entire country, and he's showing it today with some throws down the field as well as intermediate. LSU wants to take a timeout. You can see the tempo there. The big play down there forces Utah State and forces LSU to. What a grab from Jordan Nathan. Aggies on the move back in a moment. Jordan Love now in his third offensive coordinator, Mike Sanford. But actually, these two have a relationship going back to high school. Mike Sanford was an assistant at Boise State and was somewhat interested in Jordan Love coming to Boise. But then Mike Sanford got the job at Notre Dame. He was also recruiting Ian Book at the time. Decided to go with Ian Book, brought him to Notre Dame. But now their paths cross again as Mike Sanford was brought on by Gary Anderson to be the offensive coordinator here at Utah State. So you just never know how things will turn out for you. Matter of fact, Jordan Love tried to be the first Utah State quarterback to be drafted since 1989. I think he's got a good chance. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> I would say so. Second down and 10. And the biggest thing for LSU is getting lined up. The tempo when Utah State gets going, you see him running around trying to get in the right spots. We've seen a couple times they've caught LSU in some precarious spots trying to get lined up. Four-man rush going up top again. This one is intercepted. What a grab by Derek Stingley. The true freshman has just been making play after play for LSU. You're talking about one of the top players in the country, and he just happens to be a freshman. Look at the way he plays this perfectly. Stays in the hip pocket, looks back for the football, and then goes up at the highest point and catches this football. This is what they teach on Sundays. And this kid is only a freshman. He couldn't play that football any better than he did there. Number one player coming out of high school a year ago. Enrolled early, couldn't wait to get to Baton Rouge and be actually from here, but be yeah. a part of this program and get things cranked up. Kurt, you know, you talk to his teammates, they say he just gets it. He's yeah. wired correctly. <laughs> Not much on the ground for Edwards Hilaire. No gain on the play. When we talked to Grant Delpit about Stingley, and we asked him, the first thing he did was just smile. Yeah. Like, this kid is special. And that's coming from a guy who's played as a freshman here. The upside for Stingley is going to be pretty positive. And LSU here, they got to find a way to get off their own end line here. Try to run the football. Too much penetration from Utah State early in this ballgame. Burrow will stand on the S in the middle of that end zone. Quick throw. That pass is caught by Thaddeus Moss. Pick up six. Oh, it's third down, and let's call it four. Burrow out of that shotgun said last year took so many steps under center and never really had, had done that his he entire said, life. He said, I had done that six, six grades. So he <laughs> just wasn't comfortable, but he's completely comfortable back there in the gun now and orchestrating this offense. Looks like one on one at the bottom down here with Jamar Chase. Quick hitter, Chase makes the catch. That'll be good enough for the first down as he's out to the 16-yard line. I just don't know how you defend something that happens that quickly with a guy like Chase. Yeah, because he has the ability to make you miss at the line of scrimmage on that press coverage. Does a great job with his release and gives Burrow a nice window to throw to and a nice conversion. Gets him out of the shadows of that goal post. To the 20 goes Edwards Hilaire. Ray Grayson making the stop for Utah State. It is a hot, hot day. 
depth will be a big factor in the second half on this one. And you can see the mass changes on both sides, especially on the D-lines. These teams trying to keep these guys fresh in this hot environment. I mean, you look at this box. This is why they run the football so much. Utah State's playing nothing but coverage. Trying to set up the screen. John Emery breaking a tackle. Have the first down at the 28. Pick up of nine. That's something Coach O talked to us about is they just haven't ran as many screens in the first four games. And you can see the variety in which they're playing offensively. Run the football, using screens, quick game. They got it all working now as they're starting to feel like they're starting to get into a groove offensively. Burrow on the move. Got hit as he threw it right around the 12-yard line. He gets helped up there. Pressure came from Henniger. Well, good coverage on the back end by Utah State. You know, you start talking about Gary Anderson, as kind of a defensive guy, says he loves to play man, but with this group just not there yet. So he doesn't do it as much as he would like to. Yeah, the style in which they play it is suitable for them and the personnel they have. They play a lot of zone coverage. And that particular play, LSU went with three receivers out, so they were able to bracket and cloud those three receivers that were out in the route. Utah State bringing five. And Burrow goes down around the 23-yard line. Jacoby Wildman with the sack, a loss of five. And you watch on the back end. They got three receivers out in the route. I mean, there's really nowhere to, for Joe Burrow to go with the football. And as he scrambles out, he gets Henniger in his face. It's, this Utah State defense plays this style, and they're really good at it. It's simple, but it's what fits them. Third down and 14. This is the seventh third down for LSU today. Over the middle, Derek Dillon. First down at the 43, 20-yard pickup. Well, the only thing when you have this style of defense that you don't rush with three guys, you give the quarterback time to sit back in the pocket and survey the route. That took a long time for that route concept to develop, and he finally found his in-cut coming in there after about four or five seconds. First down and 10, clock ticking closer to seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Another four-minute drive for LSU. Their first touchdown drive went over four minutes. John Emery made the first man miss, but then couldn't miss, couldn't make the next couple defenders miss. As Leffridge will get credit for that stop. Yeah, number 91, Devin Anderson up front for Utah State created that no gain or almost negative yardage play with this penetration. LSU up front, offensive line, they got to do a better job of blocking up front, especially in the run game. Pass is caught by Emery. Not much hap what happened in there. They'll spot it around the 45-yard line. Three. Talking to offensive coordinator Steve Minsmeyer, he talked about what to expect coming to this ball game from Utah State. He said, I really have no idea. Every team they played this year have had a new wrinkle for this LSU offense. And right now, Utah State keeping everything in front of them and forcing them just to tackle a space. Gary Anderson wants a timeout. 5.56 to go in the first half. LSU on the move. The world is watching, so shine the light. Light the night. Light the way. After the Utah State timeout, 
LSU looking at a third down and seven. You see what LSU has done throwing for over 430 yards a game. And today hasn't been as crisp as they normally have been through the first four games of the season. And they, that's the number one word that Coach O uses. They want to be crisp and efficient, and they haven't been either in this first half. Another time-consuming drive. It's already up over five minutes. This will be the 11th play. Burrow over the middle. Good crisp throw there for the first down to the 40-yard line goes Justin Jefferson. Slight movement within the pocket. And Justin Jefferson is one of those crafty receivers that understands zone and man coverages and sat down right in the zone, right past the first down marker to get that conversion. This is the most plays in an LSU drive this year. This is play number 12 coming up. Started back at the LSU one yard line. Burrow will keep it. Burrow dives across the 25-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. This is what Burrow can do as well. He's not the most athletic guy, but he can hurt you with his legs. And you got to steal a count for him in the run game, especially on that one on his own read. Burrow to throw, going up top, looking toward the end zone, passes, caught! Jamar Chase, touchdown! LSU, 25 yards. And you see how quickly LSU can hurt you. And you can see just what Jamar Chase provides for this offense. And another big throw from Joe Burrow, giving his guy a chance to win on the outside. And Chase making an acrobatic catch to come down with it. Made one to Chase against Vanderbilt to the other side of the end zone. At about the same spot, just near that pylon. York will attempt the point after. And he'll split the uprights. 21 6, Tigers out in front. Joe Burrow with the big third down conversion. And then he dropped this one on Jamar Chase, putting his Tigers up 21 6. Steve Insminger, Joe Brady. Steve Insminger's been coaching football longer than Joe Brady's been alive. Joe Brady now in his first season at LSU, their passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach. Those two working uh, together for the first time, obviously, and it has been a really good decision by Coach O to have put those two minds together. Yeah, that combination has been really big, and they have jailed so well. Coach O even said he mentioned to Coach Insminger, hey, bringing in another guy, are you okay with you know expanding this? And he said, absolutely. Take a look at Winning with Style brought to you by Belk. And for LSU, it was their longest drive of the year in terms of plays, yards, and time. Yeah, this 99-yard drive with a, a bunch of third-down conversions in this. Joe Burrow using his legs to pick up some big yards as well. Then they come right back and hit you with Jamar Chase on the outside. When you finally get that one-on-one, -on -one, they make you pay. And we talk about the combination of so James Meyer and Joe Brady. This, is, this offense is starting to click, and we've seen it throughout the year. But... That last drive was indicative of what they can do when they're hitting. 13 plays, 99 yards, 642 time of possession. The whistles will stop the play, and I think Utah State needed to take a timeout before the play clock ran out. Speaking of time of possession, LSU has just owned it right now. They're 18 minutes and 16 seconds for 649 for Utah State. You just wonder how much this defense can hold up for Utah State with those kind of numbers. Yeah, and Utah State defense has done a really good job giving up some a couple of big plays here and there, but they forced LSU to earn pretty much every yard they've gotten, and LSU taking it full field. But like you mentioned, this is a very hot day. They're trying to rotate guys, so defensively, how long can they last going into four quarters of this ballgame? Just total of 88 yards for Utah State. 
Jordan Love, 7 of 16, 95 yards. Had a couple of nice throws, but it's really been kept off balance by LSU. They'll bring four, quick slant. That one is caught by Jordan Nathan. Pick up four there. Over the middle, that one is caught. It'll go to Devin Tompkins. That'll move the chains. Well, this is an offense that prefers to be in this hurry up, go fast, keeps defensively for LSU simplistic. Trying to get it out to the tight end, Caleb Rep. He'll make the catch, but lose two in the process. Patrick Queen making another tackle. Well, there have been five tackles for loss today by this LSU defense. And that's where Utah State cannot live, going east and west. LSU is too fast, too physical going east and west. They got to continue to go north and south like they did on the first two drop, first two actually plays. Gerald Bright scoots it out over the 40 to the 43, gain of seven. Time is, making the tackle. time is not a factor. You talked about it earlier, Dave. This is an offense that actually scores faster than LSU does. Boy, Bright is popped out of bounds by Patrick Queen, who's going sideline to sideline today. Interesting call here. Coach Anderson looks like he's going for it here on fourth down. Instead, Coach Anderson will bring out the punt team. Derek Stingley back to return, but we've got some great return men in, in this game today. Stingley averaging almost 12 yards per return. We'll have to wait. 3.02 to go. Timeout on the field. Day. Doring, Chiz, and Burns coming up at half. We'll start breaking down Auburn, Florida. These guys breaking down very important X's and O's when it comes to LSU and Utah State. So we'll break down some of those games right now. These guys, I can't take them anywhere. Uh, how about this also? Les Miles, the Mad Hatter. Oh, by the way, 7-7 against Oklahoma right now. That game up in Lawrence. We'll have highlights for all of SEC stuff coming up at half. Back to David DJ. Thank you, Peter. 3.02 to go before we get to halftime. LSU up 21 to 6. Utah State about to punt it away. Here's Callister back to punt. High kick. Stingley will watch this one bounce out of bounds into the cheerleading section. First and 10 for LSU. Joe Burrow. So far today, it's 14 of 18, 187, a couple of TDs. Did have that one pick on a pass that probably should have been caught by his tight end on that last drive. 637 off the clock, 99 yards. I'd hope that would be the longest because I don't know it's possible to go any longer, is it? <laughs> Maybe there's a half yard in it somewhere. <laughs> First down and 10. Joe Burrow making his 19th consecutive start, 18th consecutive start. He's 14 and three, trying to push it to 15 and three. What a catch from Justin Jefferson going up top to make the grab at the 47 yard line. Finally get the 101 now on the outside, creating those 101s on the outside with Cameron Haney. Justin Jefferson, 6'3, 195. Joe Burrow just giving him a chance, and look at the catch. Davis Price on that carry, picks up six. Well, wow, he does a great job on his release going outside, and he creates that outside leverage, and the ball is thrown perfectly inside. And we've seen some next-level catches here by these LSU receivers. Second down and four. 
LSU is starting to click a little bit offensively after that last drive. They picked up a couple of crucial third downs early in the drive. Big hole for Ty Davis Price. He'll have a first down at the 30. Give him 11. <laughs> we talk about Ty Davis and his strong run right there. He does a quick job getting downhill, and he's going to make that safety pay. And you can see the physicality that he runs with every time he touches the football. It's north and south. Cash Gilliam slow to get up for Utah State. Well, we starting to look at some of these quarterbacks now that we are a third of the way through the season. Obviously, Joe Burrow here at LSU has had a huge impact, but these other guys, three of the four in this list, by the way, have transferred to their current schools. Which is a really, really fun thing to talk about because we asked Joe Burrow about it yesterday, and he said, what if these guys are still at their school? They would be the number two guys at their respective schools, and we wouldn't have all this to talk about. And now you got all these guys that looking at it in the Heisman race. Right, he said he loves it. Little tap pass to Jefferson. He's going to do a 180 and run right into some white jerseys. That is a big loss for LSU of seven. Nick Henninger finally tracks him down. That Jefferson name means anything to you, of course. That's younger brother, former quarterback here at the LSU, Justin Jefferson, who played back in 2008 through 2011. I'm sure they had a, a bunch of times in the backyard. They were throwing passes to each other, wishing they could be in this environment. Right through the hands of Ty Davis Price. LSU came in averaging 58 points a game. Utah State came in with a good play. They're not, they gave up a couple deep routes, and that's going to happen. LSU has a way to create those, but Utah State should be pretty excited about how they played in this first half, forcing LSU to earn every big play, every yard, every possession in this ballgame. Incomplete pass, looking for Chase. That'll stop it with 44 seconds. Yeah, that just didn't look like they were on the same page there. Chase didn't even come off the football like he was running hard. A little miscommunication there by that offense. So now it'll be fourth down and 17. Kind of in that no man's land. LSU today, you look at the yardage and you're like, okay, pretty good. 343 total, 126 on the ground, 217 through the air, right? I mean, but based on, and these are all relative to yeah. what we've seen yeah. <laughs> this season. I was going to say the same thing when you, when you said it. I was wondering what it came from, but. They've had to sustain a lot of drive. They had some penalties that put them behind the chains. So they've had to create that yardage because of some self-inflicted wounds here. See Coach, e, Coach O decides to punt the football. First punt of the day for LSU. Zach Von Rosenberg. Will hit it into the end zone. Give us a chance to tell you that Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. It's Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions Bank. Back for another season with Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics for the coming week. It's all right here on this very network. And, of course, you can always see it on the ESPN app. They got to add Alyssa in there, right? Alyssa's on the Thinking Out Loud show, too. She's the moderator in between those two, two guys, but they do a great job on the show. It's always... Fun to watch those guys go at it and have a little fun at everybody else's system. Just... 
Aggies will keep it on the ground, run left side, no gain on the play. Utah State has run for one yard here in the first half. And they may want to just they may want to just get to the uh, to the locker room. The emphasis for LSU was being able to tackle, but I thought they did a great job of that in the first half, not giving up any big long plays from missed tackles. Well, that'll do it for the first half. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Golden Band from Tigerland on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming on the ESPN app. Been steamy last few weeks. And probably going to see some empty seats here at Tiger Stadium. With this heat index getting up over 100. Of course, Utah State not used to this. It was 40 degrees back in Logan, Utah. Gary Anderson comes out of that locker room and just hit by the heat. but. Dawn still had a chance to catch up with him. Yeah, hit by the heat, but also a little disappointed in what they are doing offensively. This Utah State staff talked about how important it was on early downs for them to get ahead, to be able to do what they wanted to do offensively, and that has not been the case. He said, I don't know if we need to call better plays or what the deal is, but we've got to be better on third down, which means we've got to be better on first and second. Other side of the ball, guys, he was pretty happy with how they were able to affect Joe Burrow. He said, we're throwing a lot at him, a lot of pressures. That needs to continue. Well, they come out, run the football, and lose another yard. They are going backwards. <laughs> there are now 10 rushes for minus a yard today. That's the total opposite of what Don just talked about is being good on first and second down. Now, the second down must be a positive play because you were not successful on first down trying to run the football. Jordan Love. Nice tiger tips. Jordan Love in that first half. 11 out of 20, 106 yards. Just hasn't had much of an opportunity to really show what he can do today. Just LSU has just owned the football. That time of possession has just been crazy today. 20 minutes and 30 seconds to 9.23. I mean, those are just staggering numbers. And that's what makes every possession for Utah State very important. And look, Utah State, they're, they're going to lose the time of possession battle almost every game. Yeah. False start on the offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, third down. But today's numbers are just uh, super exaggerated. And that is not a good start. Back him up five more after you lose a yard on a run and then an incomplete pass. So third down and 16. Hard to convert these. Yeah, not many plays in the playbook for third and 16 against a front like this that's working on getting his pass rush and wants to ramp it up here knowing you're going to throw the football. Well, LSU is all over that. Gerald Bright trying to Catch that football, turn and run, but he'd run right into some purple jerseys. Yeah, trying to set up a screen there. Not many plays you have in the book. It's either screen or draw on third and long, and I think LSU knew exactly what was coming in. Almost had an interception there by Taylor Vaughn chasing. Pierce Callister back to punt it away. High short kick. Fair catch called for by Derek Stingley. So short field coming up for LSU and Joe Burrow as we look at our QB comparison. How about 217 in the first half? And that's your worst half in terms of yardage. And Dave, I think it goes back to what you just talked about. Just the lack of opportunities for Jordan Love is why his numbers look the way they do. But Joe Burrow has been the efficient one. And he's had to go 99 yards on one particular drive. But he's been the guy that's gotten him in and out of good place. From the 47, Jefferson, he got hit, lost a shoe, but still gets it to the 45 of Utah State. That's a, that's a throw we saw in the first half. He missed. He was throwing that same throughout to the, to the field in the first half and missed it. Good job of converting it there.
Gain of a yard. Anderson. Joe Burrow completing 80% of his passes coming into this game. We'll keep it on the ground and pick up the first down. First down. day to throw going to the end zone no flags on the play crowd wanted one it looked like Derek Dillon just kind of maybe got his cleat caught in the ground I mean, it was just kind of a he just fell down yeah I love this no call here the ball's thrown a little bit inside and you see he gets his tangled. feet tangled up right there yep. and not able to to really make a play on the football that's the fans were booing but that's a really good call they're not throwing that just seeing his feet get tangled at the end And Dave, you know, we talk about Joe Burrow and what he means to this team and offense. Coach O pointed to that big win last year versus Georgia that really gave him the confidence, and that's when he kind of warned his teammates over there in that big win. LSU will take a timeout as the play clock was winding down. So we'll take it with him. 12.48 to go, third quarter. Swing out from Beaumont. True South. True South presented by Yellowwood. Tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern time right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. LSU on the move, leading it 21 to 6. Second down and 10. Tigers just had to take the clock, was winding down. See there, Utah State checks when LSU checks. Different look here for Joe Burrow, see if he makes the right decision. Quick hitter gets to Justin Jefferson and will pick up five to the 35 yard line. So now it'll be third down. David Woodward, by the way, making that tackle. He is now up to 12 today. He came in leading the Mountain West, and third in the FBS, averaging almost 14 tackles a game. Yeah, three of three to four games of the season, double-digit tackles. Had a career-high 24, did Woodward against Wake Forest in their opening game loss. Burrow trying to get out of trouble, has the first down, making something out of nothing, gains nine. Love what Joe does inside the pocket here. Doesn't like anything down the field. Doesn't force it. Still keeping his eyes down the field to throw the football. But finally says, all right, I'm going to do it myself and get it with my legs. This is a great decision there to not throw that ball into any bad coverage, but just to go pick it up with his own legs. This time he'll hand it off to Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Spinning around, still driving. He'll get it inside the 20-yard line, a gain of six. But Joe Burrow came in. And now, of course, you got to factor in sack yardage here, but had 19 carries for 20 yards on the season. Today, Mr. Burrow has 10 rushes for 42 yards. Just continues to every week put good things on tape. Good things for defenses to have to worry about. Now you have to really account for him using his legs when things break down. Little play action. Burrow comes underneath. Pass caught by Moss. He is tripped up inside the 15 by DJ Williams. That'll be a gain of nine and a first down. That is Moss son of Randy Moss. That's something they, they want to get the tight ends more involved in. 
usually the tight ends have been attached, so they haven't gotten tons of football this season. Edwards Hilaire, he's inside the five. Yeah, it was interesting talking to Joe Burrow. We said, so who, who comes back in the huddle and says, I'm, I'm open, give me the ball? And, and he goes, the entire tight end group. <laughs> tight ends love the ball. I remember when I played, tight ends were always open. They thought they should get the football more than they did. <laughs> Just a growing thing with tight ends, I guess. Edwards Hilaire will check to the left side of Joe Burrow. On a second down, they get the first down just inside the two yard line. Burrow batted down at the line of scrimmage. Nick Hittinger breaks up that pass. It'll be third down. Look at the balance here from LSU's offense. And this is surprising because of the fact LSU has been throwing the football for the first four games, but coming to this ball game, they mentioned they wanted to be able to run the football, and there has been an emphasis in this ball game to run it. Burrow scanning the field, pressure comes. Back across the middle, touchdown, LSU. Give that one to Justin Jefferson. Talked about earlier, Jordan Love creating plays with his legs and the scramble drill. This is Joe Burrow doing the exact same thing and Justin Jefferson being available for him in the end zone. And good job of Burrow keeping his eye downfield. And the LSU can burden there for a big touchdown. Cage York to attempt the point after. Three touchdown passes today for Joe Burrow. Gives him 20 on the season. Point after is up and good. Now a 28-6 LSU lead. Joe Burrow having to go a little off schedule here. Use his legs, thinking about running, but finding Justin Jefferson for another touchdown. LSU up big. LSU has pushed their lead to 22 as we take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Yeah, the emphasis in this ball game has been the tackling. LSU has swarmed to the football. And not many guys have been able to break any tackles from this LSU stingy defense today. Coming in, 27 missed tackles in their last two ball games today. They have been on task and been on point. Only two missed tackles for that man's defense, Dave Aranda. And seven tackles behind the line, which has resulted in minus one rushing for Utah State. Touchback, first down, 25-yard line. You know, talking to Ed Ogeron about why there were so many missed tackles, it's not the guys don't want to, you know, it's it, they want to get their nose in there. We've heard that a lot, like coaches saying that we just got to work on our tackling. It's been a real struggle, this open field tackling. We need better leverage. And he says it's because the way the game has changed. It's hard to yeah. stop a wide receiver in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> situation in the open field. Yeah, he's calling it basketball on grads, which is what it is. Spread offenses. Here the pile drives for the first down out to the 37-yard line. A little gain of 12 on that first down catch by Scarver. But you're right, Dave. These spread offenses are just putting guys in space and forcing you to tackle. And he talked about a lot of it is guys just knowing where their help is. If you got outside leverage, you got help inside, there's no need for you to jump inside. That's kind of been the issue for him. Riley Burt. The transfer from BYU picks up six yards. Jason makes that tackle. First time we've called his name out for a stop today. Returning from injury. They'll run with Burt again. He's out to the 45. It'll be third down and about a yard. And we came to this ball game. The key for Utah State offensively, they wanted to establish their own pace. This looks like the pace they want to play with a big third down. I don't think they got it. They're going to be shy. Grant Delpit comes up from his safety spot. He said we could expect to see him a little bit more at the line of scrimmage today. Yeah, we've seen him everywhere from the high hole in the middle of the field to play a linebacker that time up on the line of scrimmage. And when we talked to him yesterday, he talked about 
My biggest strength is my versatility. I can play anywhere on this defense, anywhere in the secondary, and he just showed you right there with another phenomenal tackle to stop his Utah State offense on third down. High kick from Callister. Fair catch called for and taken by Stingley. 35-yard punt as we take a look at the smoothest play brought to you by Velveeta. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, these receivers are ready for the National Football League. And when you got a quarterback giving those guys an opportunity, they know they're going to have chances to make plays. Justin Jefferson going up, making a big grab. This offense with those two guys and they're missing Terrence Marshall as well, but those two guys have not slowed down their pace of putting a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. Jefferson, eight catches, 116 yards on nine targets, of course, has that touchdown. Coming into this game, LSU had 19 players with a catch. 19 guys had caught a ball. 11 had scored a touchdown through the air. Boy, good running by John Emery. Gain of 13. See if LSU can grind out another long drive. That's been the story for LSU today. They came in averaging two minutes and 17 seconds on scoring drives. But they have three of their touchdown drives have been over four minutes today. Burrow. Has to drop it off underneath. Pass is caught by Moss. Gain of three. There it is. They're 14th in the country. And Dave, you know what? I don't think that's a bad thing. If yeah. you're going into the bulk of your season in SEC play, things are not going to happen as fast as they've been happening. The fact that they've been, they've been able to grind out some, some tough drives shows them they have the wherewithal to do so if they need to. Pass is dropped across the middle. Trying to hit Racy McMath. And to be honest, everything has been kind of easy for this LSU offense in the first four games. Yeah, Texas gave them a nice run, but they still were able to move the football with ease and do what they wanted to. This is a good ball game to show them they have to grind out a few drives if they have to. Third down coming up for LSU. Utah State bringing some heat. Burrow felt it, runs away from it. Jefferson can't hang on to it. A little bit behind him. He's mad. Both of them mad. They couldn't make that one work. As they should be. They both saw it. Burrow saw the pressure coming off the edge, knowing he wasn't able to get him. Troy Leffers brings the pressure off his right side and just underthrows Jefferson just a little bit. That's a play they probably make every single day in practice. Jordan Nathan back to return this punt. There's a flag. Utah State went after it. What they got was Zach Van Rosenberg. Well, I'm not sure how they missed that football. They had two or three guys that were right on Van Rosenberg and Unable to get the football, but like you mentioned, got all of him. Von Rosenberg just turned 29 years old, the fifth oldest player in college football after spending six years in minor league baseball. Just showed up on campus. We were talking to Coach O about it yesterday. He goes, he literally just showed up. We didn't have any idea. He's like, hey, I think I might be able to punt. And they hey, let him punt I... a little bit, and they were like, oh, <laughs> we might be on to something. Hey, Coach O, can I play? Yeah. Can I play for your team, please? Yeah. Can I, can I talk, talk, talk to you for a second? It's like all these young 18 and 19 year olds trying to take my leg off here. Personal foul. Running, roughing the kicker, number 11. That's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. I 
Off you come right in here, right through the middle. I'm not even sure how he missed that football because he had the ball was still on his foot here. Just barely oh. missed it. His angle was bad. His angle was at his thigh, not at his foot. They tell you to go at his foot when you're trying to block a kick. And if he goes at the foot of it, I think he gets the block. But yeah, he was there. <laughs> he was there. But instead, it puts the defense back on the field for Utah State. The first down in Aggie territory at the 49-yard line. Last thing you want to do is give these guys more possessions. There goes John Emery, cuts it back. Pick up seven. Emery carries the ball, tackled by number now. 419 yards of offense. 173 of, of that on the ground. You can add some more. Good running right there from Emory, who gets flipped in the air as he gets to the 32-yard line and a first down. LSU's never had an issue with finding a running back, and Emory is next in line. And look at the vision. Look at the cut. He has some natural ability, and you can see when he runs the football. Not only is he physical downhill with it, but he can make you miss. Off the left side for three. We're actually seeing number 70, Ed Ingram, at left guard right now. Ed, we were told yesterday, and even Coach O said at his press conference, that Ed Ingram, who's been out for 14 months, had an off-the-field situation, had some charges brought against him. Those charges were dropped. He was cleared of everything, so he was brought back into the program. Played a lot as, as a freshman in 2017. Nothing last year. He spent the last two weeks trying to get ready. We thought he was going to start, but he only played one possession in that first half. But he's playing quite a bit here in the second half as Emory makes the catch. He stays on his feet and lost the football, and Utah State thought they had it. Maybe they do. Leffridge was in there. He may have come up with the football when it's all said and done. Well, if there's anything that Coach O would be extremely mad and disappointed about, is the fact they put the ball on the ground so many times a day. Punches that football out. Utah State with a big key stop here. Now get the football back. ESPN Plus is your home for thousands of live events and exclusive originals. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Well, Utah State creates another turnover. A couple of fumble recoveries and interception today. The Aggies will have it right around the 19-yard line as they start this drive. Trying to get this, what had been a pretty high-powered offense cranked up. Catch made by Carson Terrell. And here's a look at that fumble. Carson Terrell. Ratzenheimer came in and kind of forced that. His second forced fumble today. Leffridge scooped it up. That was the old Peanut Tillman from the Bears punch right there, punching that football out. No gain on that, so now you're looking at third down as Utah State goes fast. Love. And just like that, it's fourth down. And here's the thing, that hurts your defense more than anything Ooh. because you're to come right back on the field again after a quick three and out. It's the only thing with the up-tempo offense is you're not getting first downs, you're not moving the chains. Puts your defense in a very, very precarious spot. Offensive coordinator Mike Sanford said to us when we were meeting with them that he's not going to change who they are and what they do. Derek Stanley Jr. deep for the Tigers. Wobbly kick, fair catch call for by Stingley. We'll take it at the 37-yard line. 41-yard punt. Let's go downstairs, check in with Dawn. I I'm still surprised you're upright at this point, Dawn. It's so hot. <laughs> uh, barely. Let me tell you, though, about this Utah State defense. I've been watching them the entire game. They look a little quieter, not as much communication here on this sideline, a little more sluggish when they're standing up, and a lot of that could have to do with the heat. I tell you what, it is brutal down here, and you're looking at a team that practiced 
in weather with a high of 56 all week long. So that is a stark difference. Their head athletic trainer, Mike Williams, told me they tried to pour electrolytes into them all week long, but it is so hot down here, and that defense has been out there a while. Don, last week we were at Vanderbilt. It was like 120-something on the <laughs> turf there. Are we close to that here? Does it feel like that here? And, and are you so, turning Are you turning into Babs down there, not Dawn now? Yes, because it is so hot. Let me tell you this. Vandy has that turf, so that makes it a little hotter. There's a little bit of a breeze here, but, man, it is brutal. I can't believe it's October down here. Let's hope this is our last hot, hot day. <laughs> I think I'm speaking for everybody in the South. I hope. 28-6, <laughs> yeah. LSU out in front. Of course, night game next week for LSU. So Gators come to town. Burrow. Well, he is so calm in these situations where he's flushed out of the pocket. His eyes are always down the field. Uh, to me, that's one of the things I noticed, Joe Burrow, from last year to this year, just the calmness that he has. Yeah, and where a lot of quarterbacks get frustrated or get flustered inside the pocket when their first or second read is not yeah. there, he continues to still look down the field and doesn't get all antsy inside the pocket like you see some guys do. And he has grown tremendously as a quarterback in one year. But a third down coming up, third down and six. LSU nine out of 13 on conversions today. And they get number 10. Burrow trying to make it happen. Pass is caught there by Jamar Chase. Breaks a tackle, has that first down for the Aggie 40 yard line. A gain of 19 yards. I mean, it's tough for a defensive backfield to cover this long. And Jamar Chase comes back to his quarterback. And Utah State now has eight missed tackles in his ball game after Jamar Chase makes another guy miss near the sideline. Homegrown product, Caden Anderson out of Logan, Utah. A little slow to get up in front of that LSU bench. We'll step aside for a moment as LSU is on the move again. Oh, you hate to see that for Caden Anderson, the junior defensive tackle, being helped off the field as LSU converted another third down. Now 10 out of 14. Joe Burrow, big part of that, using his feet and his arm to convert this afternoon. Yeah, that's where he's been special. And the off-schedule plays I wore Joe Burrow, I think, has grown as well. He's been good inside the pocket, but when things break down, he's still able to make a quality decision and a big play to, to help this offense. First down and 10 from the 39. Little play action for Burrow. Going up top toward the end zone. Jefferson is there, makes another catch. Oh my goodness, Justin Jefferson with his second touchdown catch of the day. This one goes for 39 yards. It's almost unfair to watch these guys run routes and Joe Burrow put him up the bat. It's not enough for DJ Williams on the outside for Utah State and Burrow drops another perfect throw for a touchdown to Justin Jefferson. Burrow putting up some more impressive numbers, 24-35, 315, and four more touchdown passes. Can't forget he has one rushing today from a yard out. Point after, up and good. They make it a 35 to six game. It's a switch route. He's gonna start here and run right down the sideline. You're gonna get a switch route coming inside and they get confused and watch Justin Jefferson go down this right sideline and nobody is there. And just a perfectly thrown football on their right side shoulder. Corner gets look inside and look at the eyes of Joe Burrow, eye that safety down, give this receiver a chance, and then at the end, Justin Jefferson with the late hands to get his hands up to make that play. Well, semi, semi happy that Joe Burrow. Jefferson with another touchdown reception. That is seven this season for Justin Jefferson. Nine catches, 155. 
Hey, what? These numbers, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to look at these numbers. And I think anybody that's watched this game from beginning to, to this point anyway said it hasn't been as crisp as LSU has played, but the numbers yeah. tell you otherwise. I mean, they've rushed for a season-high 190. They've thrown for over 300 again. They're at 505 total yards and 35 on the scoreboard with a quarter and change left. Oh, they're going to say, ah, oh, Joe only completed 68%. He's been completing 80%, but 68 is pretty darn good. Joe has been able to use his arm, his legs to create for this offense, and it's been pretty special to watch. When things aren't there, he makes something happen, but when he has an opportunity to put his receivers up the bat, he does a great job doing so. The extra play, off-schedule plays are what making Joe Burrow the next type of big quarterback in the Southeastern Conference and in the country. LSU is rolling right now. Tamar Chase had four touchdown receptions against Vanderbilt. Justin Jefferson has a couple here today. These two guys have combined on the year for 13 touchdown catches. Right there, the ball. There's another team over in this Western Conference with some pretty good receivers, and LSU was trying to throw their hat in the, in the ring and say, hey, we got some. Pretty good receivers over here as well that you got to pay attention to. Now, I know there's a long way before we get there, all right? I mean, LSU has got a, a tough schedule coming up. First down for the Aggies. Catch made by Tompkins. Of course, Florida will be here next week. But, I mean, if things play out and we get to early November and Alabama and LSU are ooh, sitting there undefeated, can you imagine what that's going to be like? Got to go to Tuscaloosa. Interception by LSU and in Aggie territory. That one is going to set LSU up right around the 44-yard line. Vincent comes up with the pick. Yeah, this is just a frustration throw. I haven't had many throws down the field. You can see Jordan Love is covered like a blanket pretty much. Vincent does a great job there of really sitting in that hip pocket, and when he throws the football, breaks on it. I think that was the throw that Love would want back. But he hasn't had many opportunities today to throw the football down the field, so I don't blame him trying to fit one in there. Ty Davis Price back on the field at running back. And he'll take it inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. We're talking about that LSU schedule. Obviously, Florida's here next week. Then they're at Mississippi State. I mean, let's just say Auburn keeps rolling. They are undefeated. They'll come in here the end of October. That could be a massive game. And then you get a week off if you're LSU, and then you go to Alabama. No rest for the weary in this in this league right here. You got to be ready to play every single week. And the West has turned out to be a really, really tough conference. First down to run for Ty Davis Price. But this is what's in store for LSU over the next four games. Now, nobody plays a more difficult stretch than Florida, which starts today against Auburn. But this, in its own right, has a lot of potholes in it, right, if you're not playing at a high level. Yeah, I mean, a good thing for LSU, they get Florida, they get Auburn in their own building, and it's going to be live. We know night game for next week for LSU and what that means for the fan base here. But going to Tuscaloosa, but it's going to be a tough schedule. That's why they're hoping to be clicking on all cylinders before they get there. Quick hit, it's caught. Stephon Sullivan will pick up eight. Sullivan's eighth grab of the year, up over 100 yards. The senior out of Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Aggie shaking up at the 25-yard line. Tipa down. He's injured. The senior out of Euless, Texas, transferred in from TCU. That's something that Gary Anderson was able to do, fill some holes. They lost a bunch of players all right, from that 11-2 team. He went out and got some transfers, some graduate transfer guys that were ready for plug-and-play type situation. And there's one of them right there, Nalei. 
You give Utah State a lot of credit. I mean, they, they come into this game three and one. They should have started the season at Wake Forest and had a chance to win that ball game late and just couldn't finish it off. This is a, a good football team that competes hard, and they've done it today, just a little overmatched by this LSU team. LSU will let the clock wind to zero and wrap up the third quarter. A couple of touchdowns for the LSU offense to push this lead to 35-6. to six. And Man, we've seen a lot of those type of graphics this whole season for LSU. Just domination offensively. Today, the defense adding on. Around like crazy in that one. <laughs> That'll be next in line for this LSU team. Be the first time Florida's been here since that goal line stand by the Gators. Jim McElwain was running the show for Florida at the time. You know, it's it's so different when you start to see these the numbers between Florida and LSU. But you just watch Joe Burrow. This time a year ago, you know, against the Gators, he was 19 of 34, 192, couple of picks. It is a completely different guy in this offense. Yeah, I mean, just when you talk to him, the calmness he, he has about this offense and what he feels at the line of scrimmage is he has full authority at the line of scrimmage to do whatever he wants to get him in a good play. It's Moss with it. He drives inside the 10. Coach O yesterday, though, said he has full authority. If I like it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it all goes back to the head, man. Yeah, he can do what he wants. If I like it, <laughs> that was funny. Not much there for Ty Davis Price. Davis -Price He'll actually lose a couple of yards. What you can see, Joe is completely in command at all times of this offense. And he said he knew back in the spring this offense could be special. Coach Joe said it was a scrimmage right before the spring game when the offense completed 80% of his passes where he, he knew this offense could do some things they're doing now. Burrow pass caught by Moss. Touchdown pass number five goes to Thaddeus Moss. The first touchdown catch for Thaddeus Moss. Good inside slant here. Burrow put this ball on his chest. Look at the perfect throw in football, giving his receiver tight end a chance to get in the end zone. And you got a big tight end like Thaddeus Moss. He's going to make guys miss and bounce off. Steve Insminger, the offensive coordinator, told us they were going to try to find the tight ends a little bit more. That is what they've done. Moss has five catches on the day. Came in with just three all season. From the Grove in Oxford, Mississippi, Hottie Toddy. All right, we're going four downs here with Coach O. You ready? Ready to go. Rapid fire. Favorite artist or song? Jumbalaya Crawfish Pie. Hank Williams. <laughs> Hank Williams, I like it. Okay. Uh -huh. Best place to eat in Baton Rouge? Mike Edison. Ooh, okay. All right, third down. Here we go. Craziest thing you had to do to motivate your team before pregame? Had to punch myself in the jaw. Punch yourself in the jaw? And what happened? Yeah. Woke him up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last thing. Your wife says she let, she let you drive the car for church. Yeah. What's the one chore Coach O has to do at home? Pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was four downs with Coach O. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. Uh, that happens in a lot of houses right back there. Huh? Gotta pay the bills. I think <laughs> gotta pay handle, the bills. I think he can handle that. Yeah, no, I think he's yeah. doing pretty well. But, you know, you, you, there was a great article in The Athletic this week about some of the motivation techniques that he uses and has used, whether he was here at LSU or at Southern Cal. And, the one thing they kept coming back to is he hits himself in yeah. the jaw with yeah. some pretty good force. Knocked his tooth out one time, yeah. right? <laughs> they say he knocked his tooth out and just kept going. I don't know how you don't get uh, fired up after your head coach knocks his tooth out in pregame. 
That is, they say it's legendary, some of the stuff he's done. Throwing chairs, I mean, he's, whatever it takes to get him motivated. A little different than Mark Ricks, right, at Georgia? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't throw many chairs. <laughs> yeah. <in our> <laughs> Gain of three. Love. Pass will be complete, but they'll lose some yardage on that one. Enoch Nawahi. That'll be a loss of some more yards. There's been a, too many of those negative plays today. Matter of fact, there have been eight tackles for loss. Patrick Queen has three of those TFLs today for LSU, but Vincent is down. Vincent with an interception today. Queen's had a nice game. We've called his name out quite a bit, and he's been played sideline to sideline. Well, we got a second. Let's get it to the studio. Peter Burns, what's up? All right, Dave Neal, we are just about an hour, 15 minutes away from the Missouri Tigers taking the field again after a bye week. Remember, they were 1-5 in five back in 2017. They make a bowl game 17-7 and seven since then. They'll be facing off Troy, a team of LSU fans know a little something about from a couple years ago. Yeah, Troy's one of those dangerous teams. Watch out for Troy. Yeah, sneaky. Got some really good players at Troy. I mean, they, they recruit really well at Troy. And they match up well with a lot of these Power Five teams, so it's Missouri has to be on high alert. So the staff still attending to Vincent. We'll step aside as well. Back in a moment. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Well, LSU just opened up their brand new nutrition center this summer, and with that came the hiring of executive chef Michael Johnson. He decided to start a new tradition this week. Every Thursday night prior to home games, they honor a senior football player with what he calls a taste of home dinner. This week, it was Brayden Fahoko from Hawaii. Chef called his mom, Linda, got his favorite recipes, put together a Polynesian-style meal, and yes, that included a full pig wrapped in banana leaves, smoked for over 12 hours. Chef told me he was up at 3 a.m. to got that, get that going. He said, just a really cool way to bring home here for these athletes, and it was a big hit. So coming up next week, guys, Joe Burrow's night, a little Midwestern style. Joe told us uh, you can expect maybe some pot roast, some garlic mashed potatoes. I think a little bit easier preparation for uh, Michael Johnson next week. That looks like some good food. Why not come back next week? Yeah. Throwing up, and that one might be intercepted. Did Delpit hang on? He did want an interception. Maybe the last guy you want to throw a football up to to put up the bat. He is a ball hawking safety here. The way he goes about getting this football, and that's why he's considered one of the best in the country at his position. But watch him at the highest point here. Fight off the receiver, and look at the hand streak to hold on to this football as he is trying to rip it out of his hands. And that's why many experts believe Grant Delpit would be a first round pick next year. His first interception of the season for Grant Delpit, the junior out of Houston, Texas, the All-American a year ago. Having some clock issues here. Clock says 8:19, but there's over 12 minutes to go in the quarter. Based on how hot it is, I don't necessarily think that many people would mind the clock running. Gary Anderson saw something that he didn't like. So he will challenge this, and we'll take another look as well. It looks like he has complete control of the football there. See what happens as he hits the ground. Look at like that ball might have moved. And 
Does he, does he control possession all the way to the ground is the question. You can see he has it there, but from the other angle, you can see looks like that ball was kind of hit loose as he went to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, my question is, did he have enough for possession before the ball? Did he secure it enough? Did he take enough steps? And, and with that, we, good thing we have Matt Austin with us, our rules expert. Matt, what do you make of this one? Well, Dave and, and DJ, I agree with you. He had the ball above his head, but as he was going to the ground, it did look like the ball might have come loose and hit the ground when, between he and the, the offensive player. I'm not sure there's indisputable evidence, though, to overturn. So this is going to be an interesting one to see what the replay official sees. And Matt, from what you saw there, he is like a receiver. He has to continue the catch all the way through the ground, correct? That is correct. He has to control it all the way in. So you could make the case that he was an upright receiver and then going to the ground, he doesn't have to, but you have to make sure that he has does have firm control of that ball in the air, which I don't think he does. And right there's a great view. I think it definitely hit the ground. Absolutely. So I would not be surprised if they overturned this call. All right, well, we'll After wait. Review, Thank you, Matt. The ruling on the field stands of an interception. Utah State has a timeout taken and has no challenges remaining in the game. So the play stands, not enough to overturn it based on I mean, it the looks video like, evidence. Looks like this ball clearly is the ground. It moves there. Well, you can see it didn't seem like he had his hand under it at all, but they saw enough to make the call stand on the field. So there's 12.28 on the game clock. Miles Brennan in at quarterback. Chris Curry in at running back here in the fourth quarter. So Joe Burrow's day is done. Chris Curry with the carry picks up six. So Burrow finishes up 27 of 38, another 300 yard game. Another that is four straight 300 yard games, which is now an LSU record. He's adding on to his completion records of 20 or more completions, which is up to eight straight. Good run by Curry. Now LSU also, will, they came into this game scoring the most points in SEC history through four games. They needed 41 to hold the record for most points through five games, and they have done that. Still chasing their season average, though, which is at 57.8 points per contest. They're just slacking right now, man. They haven't got to 57. I mean... Tough sledding for this offense today, right? It's, uh, I mean, it's crazy <laughs> when you start looking at these numbers. I mean, they're going to go over 600 yards of offense again, but 55 against Georgia Southern. They put up 45 in that thrilling win over Texas, 65 versus Northwestern State, 66 against Vanderbilt. Joe Burrow has 11 touchdown passes in the last two games. This may be the most complete game LSU has played all year when you factor in what they've done defensively against a pretty good offense here at Utah State. Brennan's pass is caught over the middle. That'll be a first down at the 42-yard line, a pickup of 11 to Racy McMath. I mean, 272 points for five games. Steve Insminger, Joe Brady on the right side there. Those two have uh, meshed, using the word from Coach Ogeron, very well. And Steve Insminger was telling us, you know, I get to think about the next series. Joe's thinking about what would be the great third down play yeah. here. Give me something, you know, if we get a third down coming up, give me something good. He, he talks about the process they go through every series. He says when Joe, when his offense comes off the field, Joe talks to, to Coach Brady, and he gets ready for the next series, and then by the time – they get ready. Hey, coach is ready to talk to Joe. Well, oh. time out on the field. Looks like our umpire took a, took a tough tumble. We'll update it when we come back. Well, tonight after the Vandy Ole Miss game on our SEC Saturday night, it'll be SEC Now. We'll give you a complete wrap-up with highlights, analysis, and interviews from the day in college football. Be sure to join Dari, Coach Chiz, Chris Doring as they break it all down 
They are so good at that. One of my favorite shows all year. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, they put in some good time, man. They about, about Peter kind games. of sets the table, and Adari gets to come and eat the dessert, right? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. There's now 10.46 remaining in the fourth quarter. Having some clock issues. We'll try to keep you updated as much as we can. 10.46 to go here in the contest. On a first down and 10. Still the combination of Miles Brennan and Chris Curry. He will hand it off to Curry, Curry who dodges one man, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet, running hard, finally brought down. His forward Chris progress Curry, will get it to the 37-yard line. The redshirt freshman. Getting some work today. We've seen Ty Davis Price, John Emery, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. Now, Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette's younger brother, who has been playing here, the senior from New Orleans, who actually has his degree in hand, decided to step away from the football program this week. It felt like it was time. And obviously, you start looking at the people in front of you, you might not get a whole lot of playing time. 13 carries on the year, did Fournette. Look at this backfield. It's a crowded backfield with a lot of quality guys back there. Let's get an update from Peter. Curry carried the ball. All right, thank you, Dave Deal. Getting ready for another game coming up momentarily. That'll be the Missouri Tigers. That game kicking off at 4 p.m. And Eastern, Kelly Bryant 19 and 3 as a starter, but used his legs last week. 77 yards rushing against the Gamecocks. We'll see if he can do that against Troy. Thank you, Peter. As Curry gets that handoff and we'll pick up just a yard, so it'll be fourth down and short. Brings up a fourth down. Unless you're going to attempt a lengthy field goal. Ball sits just inside the 35, so they'll place it at the 43. 53-yard field goal attempt from Cade York. He hit it for 47, and the opener against Georgia Southern has yet to miss this season. And that one will miss wide left. Kick is wide left. First down, Utah State. Well, the SEC has a 99% chance with five unbeaten teams to put one team into the college football playoff. Two teams, 60%, almost as good as the ACC has to put one in there. Wow. I mean, it just speaks to how many quality teams are in each conference and where they're projected to finish. Now, obviously, you got some teams that's going to play each other, especially in the SEC, with those five unbeatens, as well as the Big Ten. But it just speaks volumes of how good the competition is in all these conferences. Well, the Pac-12 just uh, stuck in the mud right now in terms of that conference as a football league. Less than 10% chance to get a team into the college football playoff. Pick up a three. I just think it's amazing that there's a 60% chance to get two, two in, right? teams. When it first started, when it first came out, everybody thought, ah, two teams from the same conference, that would never happen. Now you got over a 50% chance, over a 60% chance to get two in from the SEC. That one is off the arms of Scarver. That's the kind of day it's been offensively for Utah State. 15 yards rushing, 130 yards passing. It's been tough sledding for Utah State this ball game. I mean, they they got some really talented players on both sides of the ball, but lack of opportunities on offense has really hurt them. They had a lot of three and outs in this ball game, unable to run the football. It puts you in some very bad spots offensively for Utah State. 
Utah State has scored 20 or more points in 21 straight games. That is the third best streak in the FBS, only behind Oklahoma State and Ohio State. Jordan Love chased down and will be out of bounds. See where they spot that around the 37-yard line. Ends up being a loss of a yard for Jordan Love, who has had better days, just 15 of 30, 130 through the air with three interceptions. And those three interceptions, you start thinking, adding them up. He has eight picks this year. He only had six interceptions a year ago with 32 touchdown passes. One of those picks by that guy right there, Derek Stingley. Fair catch by Stingley to 25. LSU with the football when we come back. Coach O, his club out to a 42 to 6 lead here late in the fourth quarter. 7.39. The clock has been malfunctioning, but 7.39 left to play. Joe Burrow's day is done. He's turned it over to Miles Brennan. Miles, the sophomore at a Long Beach, Mississippi. You talk about a guy that's got a strong arm. My man can certainly spin it with the best of them. Yeah, I watched him on practice on Thursday, and he can rip it as good as anybody like you just mentioned. And they give him an opportunity to throw it. You'll see the arm strength that Miles Brennan possesses. 16 to 25 on the year for Miles, 207 yards. They'll keep it on the ground, try to chew up some of this clock. Gain of three on the play. So LSU will do what they needed to do. You know, after that off week, it's just it's one of those, you never know how your team's going to respond to that. Right. I think that they spent a lot of time trying to figure out how we can get guys on the ground. Let's tackle better, some, especially on the back end. And I think we saw proof that extra work paid off today. And Coach O even talked about they started every day with a drill they called a fit drill. And basically fitting in the run game, fitting in space, and trying to make a tackle. And it looks like it's worked out pretty good today. I'm anxious to hear Joe Burrow's comments after this game on, on his performance because he was so good against Vanderbilt. Six touchdown passes, almost 400 yards passing, and says, ah, it wasn't so good. Yeah, I mean, you can think back to some of the plays today. Yeah, he threw for a bunch of yards and had multiple touchdowns, but he's going to look at those plays he missed. A couple times rolling out, missing guys, a couple errant throws. The interception for one sticks out, throws a little bit high to Thaddeus Moss and gets it intercepted. Those are the plays he's going to look back and say, I got to get better on those plays. There's Brennan trying to pick up the first down. He may have it just to get it to the 35, and let's see where they... Spotted. They're going to be just short, a few inches short, so it'll be fourth down and, and literally inches. Six minutes on the game clock. Six minutes on the game clock. There you go. Six minutes on the game clock, which will continue to run. LSU's going to punt. He's got a 6 4 quarterback in there. Let him just ah, to get his nose out there. I was thinking the same thing. Brennan is tall. He's. In the game. Strong kid. You'd think they just maybe lean over and get that couple inches you need, but maybe he needs some guys on defense to get some reps. <laughs> yeah. It's always strategy to what they're trying to do. Jordan Nathan, fair catch at the 10-yard line. So the Aggies will have it after a 55-yard punt. Good to see Zach Von Rosenberg doing his thing after getting roughed on a punt here in the second half. I mean, Utah State last year, just to give you some perspective, offensively, they were putting up points at an alarming rate, 47 and a half points per game, which was second in the FBS. They had the third best scoring margin last year as well. Only behind Clemson and Alabama. But today, in 2019, not much happening for this offense against what was a stout LSU defense. For Utah State, the one thing that they have to really harp on as the season progresses is turnovers. They had four turnovers versus Colorado State last week and were able to overcome it to get a win. 
can do that versus really good football teams. And today you've seen a few interceptions by this Utah State team and Jordan Love. And it's hard to overcome and get a win on the road versus a team like LSU when you turn the football over a few times. There is Jordan Love now signal, signaling in the plays to Henry Columbi, the sophomore out of Hollywood, Florida. Getting some work. State of nine on the year, throwing the football. A couple of touchdowns for 93 yards. Throw it here. Well, Keyshawn Vaughn two weeks ago against this LSU defense went for 130 yards on 20 carries. Today, Utah State has put up 18 yards in the run game, 148 total yards on the day. But this neighbor around it will be extremely happy about this performance from his group. And it's been multiple guys in certain spots doing it. And he talked to us the other day, just yesterday, about so many different players are playing different spots on this defense and trying to figure out the right combination of guys with so many guys out of here. Now they're hoping to get some guys back, but we were glad, glad to get Caleb on chasing back. But he just said it's a mixture of injuries and just execution on this defense is why they haven't played the style in which they wanted to. Again, our game clock has been broken. We are just a tick under four minutes to play in this game. Inside handoff goes to Enoch Nawahine. The true freshman out of Hawaii. I thought it was a great story that Coach Aranda talked about with Coach Gary Anderson, the head coach of Utah, giving him an opportunity to come and be the defensive coordinator there. Right after he was fired from Hawaii and not knowing where he was going to be coaching next. And he said Coach Anderson called him and said, hey, we want to bring you in for an interview. And... The rest is history. So he said he is one of the best people that he's ever known. Yeah, man. You know, he was living in campus apartment. Was Dave Aranda when he lost his job? He said they were asking. He got 15 days to move out. He's like, my whole world was turned upside down. I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing, and out of nowhere. He gets the call from Gary Anderson, who he had met a few times at some camps in Hawaii. And he said he broke down in tears. It was such an emotional, like somebody knew I existed. I'm on this <laughs> island. The time change makes it hard to contact anybody. And those two had a, um, a nice relationship, working relationship, and it's moot. And it has certainly continued on, even though they're on opposite sidelines. But Dave Aranda owes a lot to Gary on the other side of the field. For more, let's go down to Dawn. Dave, I actually asked Coach Anderson about that phone call before this game. He smiled when I mentioned it, and, and I asked him if he knew how emotional Coach Aranda was during that phone call. He said, oh, come on, you know Coach Aranda. He never let on that he was emotional during that call, but he followed it up with, that is a special guy who is a great family man. Coach Anderson said so much respect for him, so that's a mutual thing between the two of them. Yeah, those two... Uh Great working relationship over the years. And uh, boy, Dave Aranda certainly considered one of the premier coordinators in the entire country. And uh, that week off has benefited his group here today. That handoff goes to Ty Davis Price. Davis Price carried the ball. Out to the eye of the Tiger. Lock it mid -side. First down for the Tiger. Up over 600 yards now of offense for LSU today. So they have surpassed their season average, which was at 563. Third in the country. But they're not going to catch their point average, which was leading the country at 57.8. I think the more impressive thing today, they were able to run the football. That's a point of emphasis they wanted coming into this ball game. We have to create a line of scrimmage change. And today they created at times and the numbers show you they wanted to run the football and be effective doing it. 
Well, they might have just lost a yard. See how they score that because they're sitting right at 600. <laughs> so you drop back under yeah. 600 now. There was a running back for the Atlanta Falcons back in the 70s named Dave Hampton. He was oh, chasing yeah. a 1,000-yard season. Remember, it was the old 14-game season, so 1,000 yeah. yards was a big deal. No doubt. He had like 1,004 and had back-to-back -back carries and lost the yardage and finished <laughs> the year with like 994. That is terrible. <laughs> yeah. That is awful. The man. things you remember as a kid, right? I mean, where does that come from? <laughs> That's just that's what? Uh. Ty Davis Price. Davis Price should have enough for the first down. And the clock will continue to run. I think that message from our referee, <laughs> no snap. He's looking let, right at Ed Ogeron. No snap needed. <laughs> you guys are good. Call it a day. Ed Ogeron will pick up the win. His team will go to 5-0 and on the year. And now they can set their sights on a night game here at Tiger Stadium in Death Valley against the Florida Gators next Saturday night. The stretch begins in earnest a week from today. And then, of course, a lot of folks looking at that November 9th date against the Alabama Crimson Tide. But a good day, statistically, for this LSU team. 601 yards of offense. They hold a high-powered offense to 159. So I think